Oh, good evening, everyone. My name's Janice, and I'm the owner and creator of the Glamour Club. And I am absolutely delighted uh, to be here today. And I'm going to be interviewing someone that I absolutely adore. And um, we're going to tell you many, many things about ourselves individually and together. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Janice, and I'm the owner and the creator of the Glamour Club. And we were set up to help to eradicate loneliness and loneliness caused by social isolation. So we are a great night out in the day. And uh, normally our events are held in Worthing and you come at noon, you leave at three, you get served a high tea by table host, or you can eat, or you can drink. And uh, you're, you're greeted on a arrival by a stilt walking butler. We have beautiful live music, all vintage, and we're themed as well. So we create an atmosphere that is really good fun. So we have held 10 events now. And one of them, the last one, we were the grand finale for uh, Worthing Mental Health Awareness Week. That was on World Mental Health Awareness Day. So that is enough about me. <laughs> I want to hand you over to Lizzie Williams. Lizzie, can you tell us a little bit about you and about how we met? Hey, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, my name's Lizzie Williams. Um, Worthing, born and bred. So local <laughs> I'm a British athlete I compete um on the track as a wheelchair racer so I'm a I'm a disabled individual uh, I can't run so I use a wheelchair a racing wheelchair to propel myself around a track or out on the road and yeah me and Janice met last year it was yeah I was uh I set myself up outside my gym which is in Gilborn Centre in the town um, I was doing like a a fundraiser sort of thing or like like busking I guess but as an athlete because I'm able to do that so with my racing chair kind of like with a, a bike you can set the back wheels onto rollers so I was able I'm able to like push without moving um, which is just it's great for training but it also meant that I was able to sort of display wheelchair racing display myself as an athlete in the middle of town and meet Janice <laughs> I'll never forget that day Lizzie um, I'd just been given a load of birthday money and uh, I thought right I, I can't remember I, I think I was putting it in or putting it out or something like that and I came out of the lift and I saw you in front of the gym and I said what are you doing here <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And I could see like you set up with your little balls all homemade and everything with your red, white and blue flags. And I just thought, yeah. wow. <laughs> and uh, you explained to me that you were fundraising for one of your trips to go, was it to Switzerland? Switzerland, yeah. So That's literally like, a couple of weeks and later, I, I was going to be yeah. in, in Switzerland, but I, I still needed to raise the funds because I was driving over there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So you told me that, Liz, and I said, right, that's it. And I went and I got my birthday money and I put it in the pot. And I, you didn't know that, did you? I, I just, I, I'm not sure, but yeah, I was very thankful. Obviously, um, that was yeah, that was super kind. We had a night, we had a nice chat, didn't we? And then you came back later and we filmed like a little. <laughs> you told me about the glamour club, and then we ended up filming like a little video or something. Yeah, so you came to the Glamour Club as a VIP guest and uh, sat on the table with um, Alison Lapper. Uh, Alison Lapper. The wonderful who, Ali. For those, yeah, uh, she's got an MBE, hasn't she? So I, I knew her from her, uh, her bust of her when she was pregnant in yeah. Trafalgar Square. She was on the fourth pillar. I remember and, that. Uh, yeah, so I was absolutely delighted that she came along. So you were sitting with her. Yeah, so it was funny because we'd actually met. We'd kind of crossed paths a few times in the past, but never actually like met, like introduced ourselves properly. So it was nice to actually be on a table with her and be able to get to know her. And, and yeah, that, that was really cool. And there was Hazel as well and, and lots of other um, fellow Worthingites. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel was our mayor at the time. Uh, yes. Yeah, so Lizzie, can you tell me a little bit about your training and how 
how you manage to get through the difficult times because you once you're on that track is it the 100 meters you you just bolt don't you what does it takes like 24 seconds or something 19 but seconds for 19. me at the <laughs> all right the, the 100 like 100 meters. i mean i'm i do a few distances not just 100 meters so when i'm on the track um i do 100 200 400 800 and 1500 meters i think as a as a wheelchair athlete you kind of have to be a bit versatile and flexible to sort of go like have more distances um on your plate but also like i'm kind of still just figuring out what i really want to figure like work on um and focus on to like compete in a major championship for but this next season i will be sort of focusing more on the sprints um but i do i really love the, the longer distance stuff because it's it's different it, it's more tactical um and yeah this year i actually also started dipping my toes into the the wonderful world of, of road racing and competed in a, a couple of half marathons just before the well coronavirus came and shut us down <laughs> yeah that's but. what i wanted to ask you about actually lizzie because um i know that i saw you practicing on your roll bars so through covid is that is that how you how do you can you tell us a little bit about the mental endurance that you have to go through to be a british para athlete it's it's a lot um to be to be an athlete training through a pandemic is tough um i mean when yeah it was march wasn't it may is normally when our season would start so to be taken you know off the track and be homebound from march you know two two months before the season is supposed to start um was tough and then obviously the lockdown lasted as long as it did and there was no idea as to what this year might look like uh, for athletes and that's you know when you're an athlete and you compete that's that's your that's what you do like you you tr you train you put all this time and effort into this into these competitions and where there's no competitions you're like what am i training for so that was a that was a huge blow for sure and i love to be in like working closely with uh, my training group which are based in in london in sutton which is is quite a trek from worthing it's about it's just over a 100 mile round trip so it's it's you know i put a lot of effort just to be able to go and train there every week and to be detached from them not to see my teammates not to train with my teammates not to be with my coach and and to hear her coach us and advise us and and criticize us and you know do what a coach should do um it was hard work but we we made the most of it i suppose um i was able to still yeah carry on training every day from the comfort of my own home and i would call like video call one of my training partners michael and we would do the session together over video which was really nice and our, our coach was was also brilliant she was actually uh, did a lot of of sort of like key work sort of roles during uh, lockdown but despite you know the great efforts that she was doing on the front line she was setting us sessions every single day which was just was great but yeah it was quite a few months we were all just sort of thinking well what's gonna happen next when are we gonna compete and it was it was all quite a rush in the end uh, in the beginning of august when the gyms opened up and the athletics tracks opened up we got the go ahead that we had a competition set for the start of september and just having four weeks to get back in the gym and get back rolling on an athletics track was kind of like my my next like mental hurdle i suppose because i was I, I just set so much pressure on myself to to still do well and, and are you the to type compete of person, well. Lizzie, when you enter these competitions, do you really want to win? No, I don't want to I don't want to win. It's not about it's not about the winning um for me. Like it's it's not about the medals or anything like that. The, the one thing that I want to get out of a competition is a PB. So being being able to push faster than I did before that's what I want like that's the grand prize for me 
Yeah, um, so a personal best, a PB is a personal best, isn't it? Yeah, PB is personal best. <laughs> <laughs> just for those people who don't know. Lizzie, can I just ask you, um, have you ever experienced loneliness, particularly being a, an athlete, you know, before and uh, during and, you know, um, COVID, um, do you sometimes feel lonely? Because I know as a leader, sometimes I, I, I still feel really lonely, even though, I, you know, I have got a team that, you know, loneliness seems to have no, no boundaries. Yeah, no, I, I honestly believe that there isn't a person out there who hasn't battled with their mental health. Um, and the more I look back at this feeling of loneliness, the more I realise it's something I believe that has always been present in my life. You know, growing up, uh, my parents didn't have a healthy relationship and that certainly took its toll. But being a young kid with a disability, I was constantly in and out of hospital. And so things would change in my life very quickly. And that instability, I think just, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to take in it. It was very hard to handle and it was harder than I think I ever realized it was um, to handle. Uh, yeah, so I got a little, a little bit lost there. What was the rest of the question? <laughs> what do you think then? Because when we're going through things, um, we don't realise what it is, but you now recognise, you know, some reflection that that's what loneliness is. Can you tell me now uh, if you recognise it and what you do, Lizzie? Because you're a real inspiration to me. And when I see you, um, I know that you're very honest in your down moments because you don't have um, anyone backing you, do you, financially, a big sponsor or anything like that? Um, not, so, you don't have financially, but just as, you know, I'm I'm an athlete, I I do public speaking, I go into schools, like there's, there's a whole array of things that I do, um, but it's, you know, I still train twice a day and I'm, I'm trying to find ways where I can earn a living and fund my sport and it's 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 a lot to juggle and, and the things that I end up saying yes to because I, I love opportunities I love being able to experience something new um I don't really know how I juggle it and to be honest I don't think I do it very well <laughs> but, but I try <laughs> you probably do a whole lot better than you feel you do Lizzie because I know that the outcomes we see the outcome of all of that effort you know so a big well done to you so can I just tell you Lizzie that you know, my mum is a great admirer of you, and most of Worthing, who have yeah. heard of you, are as well. And we're all cheering you on. You know, you are an absolute inspiration, particularly when you go around doing uh, speeches to young children uh, in schools, and you know, giving them that motivation. Because I, I remember when we had people like you coming to my school, and you don't forget people like you, Lizzie. So can, can I just ask you, um, why you uh, come to the Glamour Club and why you like the Glamour Club? Okay, well, I, I, I suppose, again, like at, at the time, it was just, you know, you had brought to my attention this new opportunity, but also this very real problem in society. And as someone that has struggled with mental health and is, is becoming more and more open um, in engaging in conversations about mental health and loneliness it was I suppose you know for, I, I, it was something that I really wanted to support but also as someone who can be surrounded by people all the time and still feel very lonely I thought it might it, it would be a nice opportunity for me to actually set aside you know some downtime and schedule in um, coming down to the Glamour Club and just seeing seeing what it was like and and talking to new people and eating eating nice food and drinking nice drinks and singing nice songs. <laughs> so you would recommend it to people then, Lizzie, if you're feeling a bit down or whatever. Yeah, not not even not even you know if if you're feeling down, but if you're if you're in Worthing and you want to meet new people or you just want to try something something new then there's this great opportunity, uh, the Glamour Club. Oh, thanks, Lizzie. Well, that's a mutual love by agreement then, Lizzie. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that's more than 10 minutes, Lizzie. So um, 
we're going to have to call that a wrap. But I've really enjoyed listening to you. There's so much more to say, though, Lizzie, you know. So I would like to invite you back if, if you would, um, you know, if you would accept that invitation, I'd be really grateful. Anytime. <laughs> thanks lizzie and so i think we're just finished with um if you see someone who doesn't have a smile on their face then give them yours <laughs> thanks lizzie